in the short period from July 1943 to October 1944, 2,518 Hellcats were manufactured. Possessing all the characteristics of a tank, however, the M18 Hellcat was still classified as a tank destroyer. This was due to the military doctrine of the Americans at that time. Accordingly, if one or small group of armor vehicles is capable of causing great damage to enemy tanks, it will be considered a tank destroyer. It was also incapable of supporting infantry as its armor is not strong enough to cover soldiers. Despite some weaknesses, the Hellcat was the most effective U.S. tank destroyer of World War II. It had a higher kill to loss ratio than any other tank or tank destroyer fielded by U.S. forces in World War II. The M18 was an improvement over the preceding M10 series and proved as capable as the M36 Slunger family. The Hellcats served through to the end of the war and were even featured in the inventories of several nations in the post-war world. The Hellcat weighed about 18.7 tons, a length of 5.28 meters, a width of 2.87 meters, and a height of 2.57 meters. It had a crew of five, including commander, gunner, loader, driver, and assistant driver. The Hellcat was originally powered by a 350 horsepower Continental R975 C1 engine, which was later replaced by a 400 horsepower Continental R975 C4 engine. The vehicle could reach a top speed of 55 miles per hour with a range of 100 miles. In contrast to the M10 and M36, which used the heavy chassis of the M4 Sherman, the M18 Hellcat was designed from the start to be a fast tank destroyer. As a result, it was smaller, lighter, more comfortable, and significantly faster, but carried the same gun as the Sherman 76mm models. 45 rounds of the main gun's ammunition were carried, 9 in the turret and 18 in each sponsor. A 0.5-inch M2 Browning machine gun with 800 rounds of ammunition was provided on a flexible ring mount for use against enemy aircraft and infantry. In exchange for mobility, the M18's armor was quite light and provided very little protection from the most commonly used German anti-tank weapons. The lower hull armor was 12.7mm thick all around. The lower front hull was also 12.7mm thick, being angled twice to form a nearly rounded shape. The hull floor was only 4.8mm, the upper hull armor was also 12.7mm thick, being angled at 23 degrees from the vertical on the sides and 13 degrees from the vertical at the rear. The armor protection was very light with open-topped turret and the consistent performance of its 76mm gun 
against the frontal armor a flatter German design, such as the tiger and panther. The open top turret left the crew exposed to the snipers, grenades, and shell fragments. However, it gave the crew excellent visibility, which was of importance in the killing of tanks. The intent of tank destroyers being primarily ambush weapons. The doctrinal priority of high speed at the cost of armor protection thus led to a relatively unbalanced design. In the field, the M18 proved an excellent vehicle for the intended role. Her top speed of 55 to 60 miles per hour in ideal conditions, faster than any other armor fighting vehicle of the world. This gave the M18 crews the ability to fire at an enemy and then quickly retreat before a response could be mustered. Entering service in 1944, the M18 served primarily in Western Europe, but was also present in the Pacific. Lucy's totaled 216, Kiel's claimed were 526 in total. The Kiel's to Lucy's ratio for Europe was 2.3 to 1 and the overall killer to loss ratio was 2.4 to 1. Its strengths were the mobility, both on and off-road, as well as the speed of rotation of its turret. Used after World War II in an improved version, the M39, it took part in the Korean War. In 1956, about a hundred of these destroyers were delivered to German army, the Bundeswehr, for the training of each troops, while the Americans permanently removed them from their ranks the following year. My video about the M18 Hellcat Destroyer answer. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos. Tạm biệt và hẹn gặp lại quý vị và các bạn trong các video tiếp theo.